Introducing WinterJS 1.0, the fastest winter CG JavaScript runtime. Yes, we have yet another JavaScript runtime. I know I just covered LLRT, and I know before that we were hyped about Bun, but the JavaScript runtime wars are chaos, and it's really interesting when these things come out. And I want to dig into this one, because it's the first one to go all in on the Winter CG side. If you're not familiar with Winter CG, it's an important piece to know about. Winter CG is an attempt at a standards group and runtime committee to agree on the things that server-side JavaScript should implement. The goal of Winter CG is to get all of these different runtimes, be it Node, Dino, Cloudflare workers, and Worker D, bun winter js llrt by amazon all these different things ideally when you write javascript on the server it will work in all of them obviously each will have their own weird specific things when i write a basic function that logs some stuff and fetches data from a server ideally none of that code is specific to one runtime and the goal with winter cg is to try and make standards for these non-browser runtimes so the code works and looks the same in all of these different places it's a really important effort to make things like a next.js project on vercel viable because you can run some of the code on edge and some of the code on not edge on Lambda with Node and have everything interop how you would expect. And now that we have even more runtimes coming, the effort of Winter CG is even more important. So naming your runtime after Winter CG in order to make it very loud and clear that you're all in on the compatibility, that's important. Someone also pointed out in chat that Bun isn't part of Winter CG, which is very valuable and true. They're building on top of things that are part of Winter CG though, which is the JSC JavaScript core runtime from the WebKit side of things. And I know that they're somewhat involved with Winter CG. They're not directly part, but they care. So as they say here, WinterJS is WinterCG compliant, trying to follow those rules. It's powered by Rust and SpiderMonkey, and it's also WebAssembly compatible. It supports server components already, which is really cool to see, Cloudflare mode, and 150,000 requests per second. Although I'll point out, I've heard some skepticism around that benchmark. Let's start with their blog post. WinterJS 1.0 is finally here. Winter is an incredibly fast Winter CG compatible JavaScript runtime written in Rust using the SpiderMonkey engine to execute JavaScript in Tokyo to handle the underlying HTTP. Sorry, I pronounced it wrong. Handling Tokyo to handle the underlying HTTP requests and JS event loop. Got to channel that prime spirit. Winter JS runtime can also be compiled to Wasm, and as such, it's the first production grade runtime that's fully runnable in Wasm or Edge. So standard Wasm Edge runtime, which means you can run a custom JavaScript runtime inside of WebAssembly. The layers here are insane. Anyways, here's what we've accomplished for WinterJS 1.0, just four months after our first announcement. Blazing fast speeds, faster than Bun, WorkerD, and Node. We'll see. WinterJS is now fully compatible with the Winter CG spec. They're also Cloudflare API compatible, and they have web framework support for Next, including server components. This is actually really cool, because like, even Bun can't run Next yet, so interesting to see. Ridiculously fast, WinterJS 1 is able to handle 150,000 requests per second when executed natively, and 20k requests per second when compiled to Wasm. That's a big speed loss, but being able to run it in Wasm is pretty cool. As of today, WinterJS can handle more requests per second than Bun, which is 117k, WorkerD at 40k, and Node at 75k. It's always fun to see WorkerD being really slow. <laughs> The value of WorkerD, for those who don't know, is that it spins up instantly. So if you want to do something stupid and quick and simple, and you want to not have a box running, suddenly have a box running, process a request and send a response, WorkerD is great for that type of thing, where you're not working for a very long time. The point of WorkerD is that it spins up quickly, not that when run for a while, it performs really well. So if your functions are small and short-lived, WorkerD is still a great choice. Same with LLRT, which again, I have a video all about if you're curious about what Amazon's been doing with JavaScript runtimes, where their goal was explicitly to just make cold starts go away. They wanted the startup times for LLRT to be insane. So LLRT's cold starts here in a Lambda, P0 is 40 milliseconds, P100 is like the worst case is 80 to 90 milliseconds, where with Node, the best case is 1500 milliseconds and the worst case is 1700. That's a pretty sizable gap. It doesn't necessarily matter how fast your code runs if it takes two seconds to start running. So that's why we care about these things. That's why a slower runtime isn't necessarily bad because if your code takes 400 milliseconds to run, but two seconds to start, that's worse than if it takes 800 milliseconds to run and 80 milliseconds to start. These numbers look good, but there's a lot of other numbers to consider here, especially in the serverless world. Winter CG compatibility. Winter CG is one of the bodies responsible for defining the set of global classes and functions that need to exist in order to run workloads properly across a set of infrastructure. That's one way of putting it. They, they specified the things that all JavaScript on the server should have. Since our first announcement, we added support to the complete set of APIs, including data fetching, files, streams, text encoders, and cryptography. Apparently there's parts of crypto that aren't implemented, which is why they have the stars for, uh, it's not fully compatible because there's some crypto functions. Cool. No one's using all those deep crypto functions. Cloudflare API compatibility is an interesting thing because Cloudflare's whole thing is 
is S3 compatibility. We wanted to make sure that most of the front end frameworks will work, no questions asked in Winter.js. Because of that, we had two options. One was that they could create yet a new integration for each framework, or they could join into an existing proposal. After a deep analysis of Dino, Cloudflare, and Fastly's adapters, we realized that the strongest option was Cloudflare, since it has already gotten most of the support with other API frameworks. It's probably the most used out in the wild. Fair. So they moved ahead with the Cloudflare API Compat. In order to support Cloudflare worker workloads, we worked like the tongue rolling game. <laughs> yeah. On four main aspects. Support for ES modules via import syntax. Support for node compatibility APIs like async local storage via async hooks. Classic, uh, God, async local storage. If you don't know what it is, it's not what it says. It's a very important API for running things on the server in node. Chaos. Be happy you don't know it. Probably deserves its own video someday. Support for invocation routes via the underscore routes JSON. That's some Cloudflareisms for sure. <laughs> Supports file system structure like this, so you can do routing by where you put files. Support for Cloudflare's Winter CG custom fetch API. So yes, they built their own fetch. You can't override fetch on the server because this thing is fetch on the server. Everyone has their own implementation. They also included the env.assets API, again, Cloudflareisms, and it allows you to serve static assets directly via Rust's super optimal static web server. So you can do something like this, return env.assets.fetch requests. So this is, if it's API, then we say okay, and we can add our own custom logic. Otherwise we bail out and use the assets that are being hosted here. Cool to see. And after getting all of these working, we were able to run almost any other web framework just by passing dash dash mode equals Cloudflare. That's actually a cool hack. Since everything supports Cloudflare already, just add Cloudflare support to your runtime and now you're mostly good to go. Compatibility with existing web frameworks. Thanks to the new compatibility with Cloudflare Workers API, we now have support for the following frameworks. Not just serving those static websites generated by the frameworks, but also allowing them to do server-side rendering, including Next, including server components, which as far as I know, makes them one of two runtimes that can actually run RSCs in Next right now. Basically just Node and kind of Cloudflare Workers. Like we're running a bunch of ping stuff on Cloudflare Workers through Vercel on Edge using App Router. And it's certainly not the focus of the Next team. But because they support Cloudflare worker APIs here, it makes sense they have that. They also have HANA support, which is one of the best ways to stub out an API in JavaScript. Astro support, Remix support, Svelte, Gatsby, and Nuxt. Interesting putting Gatsby above Nuxt. That's a statement, and it's not a statement I necessarily love. They even support server components, which is really cool. It's one of the most challenging things that they achieved. Apparently, they put a lot of work in specifically to do this. That's cool. Aiming to have server components fully working has helped us discover that our stream implementation had some small, but important differences with the spec. You could have caught this typo. Anyways, we also realized that our fetch implementation had some quirks to fix, but at the end, and after many sweat and sleepless nights, sweaty and sleepless nights, we fully got it working. You can see the Hacker News demo using server-side components. Please note that in this demo, we're not caching the fetch results on the server-side, so load times might not be the fastest. Let's take a look. Not the fastest is generous. But it works. Everything here is snappy, but this is all running in client-side traditional JS. Regardless, it's pretty cool that they have a Next.js RSC project working in a runtime that's not one of the ones that that team made. And they're now one small step away from moving their next front end from Vercel to Wasmer Edge for way cheaper costs and full local reproducibility. I'm assuming this is the thing that they sell, make any app serverless. Yep. Again, this is the goal of a lot of these runtimes. It's not just make the code run fast, it's make the cold starts and the deployment story and distributing these things around the world more viable. And Wasner's been working on these things, especially the Wasm side, for a long time now. So it makes sense that they were not just working on a runtime, but got it pretty far along. Ooh, one more thing. We are prepared to run jitted JS workloads fully in the Wasm space. Stay tuned for more updates. Interesting. Are they going after Hermes? Is this a static Hermes? Or at the very least, traditional JIT Hermes competitor? Because that makes it even more interesting. This is some community people trying to replicate their benchmarks. Because when you see numbers like this and promises like this, you have to approach it with a little skepticism. I benchmarked this using the main branch on Apple Silicon Mac Mini M2. Bun on a single core serves 192 thousand requests per second. Winter.js using three cores serves 80,000 requests per second. So approximately six times slower than Bun. I don't know where this claim is coming from. This was using 64 connections and two threads for the worker. If you look at the benchmark, they describe here that they are obviously running on a machine with at least 12 cores, and they're comparing that to Bun and others on a single thread. That's interesting. And suddenly I went from excited to very skeptical. Also very interesting, Winter's max latencies a second and a half 
in buns max, lat max latencies under 8.5 milliseconds. So it might theoretically resolve a lot of requests faster, but any individual request might take absurdly long times. And this isn't like a cold start. It's not that it's spinning up the runtime. It's that the runtime once running doesn't always respond quickly. Jared, the creator of bun even replied here, I haven't figured out how to compile it on Linux. There's a C++ compiler error when compiling the mozjs system call after hanging for about 10 minutes. Tried using the Nix shell and also did not succeed. Yeah, they're all trying to just get it to compile on Linux and they're failing. And then when they run it on Mac, if they're comparing single threaded, it's not even fair. And even multiple cores compared to a bun running on a single core, again, absurd. As they say here, they ran the benchmarks on an M3 Max laptop, which uh, the M3 Max has a lot of cores. So if their solution's multi-core and everything else is single, that's not a fair comparison. <laughs> the very least, that should have been called out. Neither the words core nor thread appear anywhere in this post. That has me a little skeptical. I'm not going to lie. Happy I found that call out. <laughs> yeah, I got a great reply. <laughs> Thinking about claiming myself as the fastest JS runtime at this point. Yeah, yeah. But clearly this is still early. 1.0 might have been aggressive and uh, I don't know if I can trust those benchmarks anymore. I don't know what else to say about this other than uh, continuing to put my money on Bun. I'm so excited about what Bun's working on that I actually invested because I do have a lot of hope for what they're building. And if the future is a new runtime in build chain, I think Jared's is going to be the one leading it. But uh doesn't mean these new things aren't exciting. Specifically, being able to run a JavaScript runtime in Wasm is a crazy concept that I'm actually excited to see the future of. So to the winter JS devs, don't take this as not hyped about what you're doing. Take it as some healthy skepticism around my excitement for yet another really performant JavaScript runtime. Until next time, peace nerds.